A lot of people who hear the gospel that we just heard and the gospel that I explained to the children think of so-called doubting Thomas. It's become very common in Christian culture to, to fault Thomas for doubting the Lord. And I mean, I, I, I get it. He, he was one of the 12. Thomas, with his own eyes, got to see Jesus teach and preach and, and got to be with him on his ministry. With his ears, Jesus spoke to Thomas. Thomas even got to feel and, 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 to, and to smell even that, that, that Lord's Supper when Jesus instituted it. We might look on him and think, wow, there's so much I wish I could, I could experience that, that, that Thomas did. But the thing that we criticize him for is when he heard this news of Easter, that Christ was risen, just as he said, he doubted. Even when his classmates said, Thomas, we saw the Lord risen. What about you guys? Maybe you've heard about Jesus through our Bible classes. Maybe you've been a church member your whole life, and you too have eaten and drank the Lord's Supper. Maybe you have seen baptism change people's lives. Maybe you know the peace that comes through faith. But there are these times when you still doubt. When we say Christ is risen, you're not quite sure. Well, if you do, you, you're a lot like Thomas in our gospel. Thomas who, who doubted. So l let's hear a bit more about this disciple of the Lord. We, we heard that they were gathered together on what was, if you think about it, the first Easter that first evening. And we hear that he was together with the disciples and the doors were locked out of fear of the Jewish leaders. It's maybe a bit hard to put ourselves in, in the situation, but the disciples were very, very much afraid on this first Easter day, on this Holy Week. Their teacher, their Lord, the one that they thought was the Messiah had been killed just a few days before. And so they were together, wondering what to do, wondering if they were going to be next. But then, what happens? Then Jesus appears to them, and he tells them these words, peace be with you. This word, peace, was exactly what the disciples needed to hear. And it's not just because Jesus gives us a peace of mind like the world gives. No, Jesus is pro promising them an eternal peace. Jesus is appearing to them not just as a friend who was gone for a few days, but he's appearing to him as someone who died and rose again. Jesus appeared to them as the one who, as we confess in the creed, descended into hell came back, showing his victory. Peace be with you, he told them. When they heard these words, they knew that everything had changed. That Jesus actually was this Messiah, that now there is a new age coming, this new age that Jesus was talking about, where we could come to God directly, have a new relationship with him. New things were going to happen. Peace be with you, he said. But, right, as we heard, on this first Easter, Thomas was not with them. And so he doubted. When the others came to him and they, and they told him what they had seen, Thomas said, no, I, I don't believe it. He's like, unless I put my fingers in those holes, unless I have the exact type of proof and evidence that I'm looking for. There's no way I'm going to believe. 
And so what did Jesus do? The next week, he appeared in the room. He appeared in the room with these same words, peace be with you. And he went to Thomas as, just as I was able to pull out the two Easter eggs with the kids. And he gave them those same words, peace be with you. Now this makes us think, what about us? What about us who also were not in the room when Jesus appeared on, on, on this Easter day? Do we need to put our hands in his side? Do we need to feel those holes uh, until we believe? Let's look again at what Jesus told Thomas. When Jesus came to him, showed him his marks, he told him, stop doubting and believe. Now, I want to say a little bit about this word, believe. It's a little hard to translate in English because this word of belief is more than just thinking something is true or something is not true. But this word also has the meaning of trust. In English, we talk about belief, we, we talk about faith. In the original Greek, it, it's the same word. It's thinking that something is true and then trusting that it's true and acting on that. We, we call that being faithful. So Jesus here, when he comes to Thomas and he tells him, stop doubting and believe, he's not just telling him to accept this fact, but he's telling Thomas, do you trust me? Just as you trusted me when I was with you, are you going to keep on trusting me when I am physically away? Are you going to be the faithful disciple that, that I've been training you for years to be? Of course, when we read God's word and think of us who want to follow Jesus, us who are confirmed members and say that we have taught with, sorry, we have learned with the master, these words are just as relevant, aren't they? Can Jesus trust us to get the job done? Can Jesus trust us to be faithful students of his? Now, there's a part of us that when we hear that, we, we have doubts, right? We have many doubts in our life. We might look at ourselves and think, well, I, 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 I don't know if I believe every teaching. I, I don't even know if I know every teaching that's in the Bible. Maybe part of us looks at Jesus' law, the, the very simple law to love your neighbor as we self and as yourself and we think of the way that we think about people when we drive our car let alone greet or not our neighbors our actual neighbors at home we might think about our relationships with our significant others or with with our kids and say well i i haven't always been that way So what does Jesus do for us? As I said, Jesus was there physically with Thomas to show him those wounds and, and to be with him in his word physically. Today, we have something that I might even say is better. We have Jesus' spirit. We have Jesus' Holy Spirit through what we call his word and sacrament. Right? As I explained to the children, all of them know about Jesus' word. All of them have faith because of word and sacrament. Because Jesus speaks to us through the Bible today. We can look back on those prophecies. We, we know what Jesus' ministry was like. Jesus gives us his spirit through the waters of baptism with that word. It washes away our sins. Those of us who are confirmed, we gather together every week to eat and drink his body and blood. And he gives us that, that forgiveness that we can t touch and taste and feel. And when we gather together as people who all have the Spirit, we encourage each other, don't we? We learn from each other. We talk about our doubts. For those of you who have come to our Bible classes, you know that 
one of the things we love doing is answering questions. Each doubt is an opportunity to look at what God's word says and, and what God's word does for us. When Jesus came to his disciples, he, he, he told them these words, peace be with you. And he followed with this, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. When Jesus left his disciples, he didn't leave them as, as orphans, the way he put it. But he gave them his spirit. So that just as Jesus spent his time in a relatively small area of the world, more or less between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea, he would send his disciples to do this same thing, the same kingdom work all throughout the world. And he gave them his spirit to do that. There's a lot you can say about this giving of the spirit. But notice this. These disciples are people that today we know as apostles. These people who learned from Jesus applied what they learned and they went out into the world as apostles. Apostle is a word that means someone who is sent out like a messenger. And these apostles went out into the world and they established these places where people can talk about their doubts, places where people can pray together and sing together, read God's word together, places where they can encourage one another, places where they can love one another, places where they can praise God. We call these places churches, and they established churches all over the world. And these churches spread very quickly from Easter. In fact, this disciple Thomas, who we often, as I said, criticize as the one who doubted, in a lot of ways, he was the most faithful. I say that because Thomas, out of all the disciples, it, from what we know, he took the, the gospel farther than any of the others did. Thomas went east from what early church tradition tells us. And he went all around the Middle East to the eastern part, reaching India. And we don't know for sure, but some people even think he went as far as China. If he didn't, his disciples did. But this is what we do know is that God's word has spread even farther than China, even farther than Spain, as far as the Apostle Paul went. But the gospel has come all the way around the world to Vancouver, British Columbia. And as all of you know, we are a city that has a lot of people who doubt. What God's word today shows us is that we do have an answer for those doubts. It's called his word and sacrament. Jesus can, can give us this physical blessing that we need through his spirit. Jesus can answer his doubts or anyone's doubts. When Thomas put his hands in Jesus' side, he said, my Lord and my God. Today, through the word and sacrament, all of us here confess, along with Thomas, my Lord and my God. So during this time of Easter, this time when we celebrate that our Lord is risen from the dead, this time when we decorate our church with the cross, that dark cross decorated white, knowing the blessings that it gives us, let's be open about any doubts that we might have. Even the Apostle Thomas doubted, and the other apostles had their doubts as well. During this time, let's use these songs of triumph that come from the Psalms and express our faith. Let's express our faith so that we can sing with the psalmist who had written, You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. 
My heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead or the grave, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. Our Lord has conquered death. That is something that we can rejoice about. I pray that he would remove all our doubts and keep us as faithful to him. Amen.